got my resources, I've got my notes. The witch is back. Hello my pretties, the witch is back. Thor, you wanna come sit with me? You got anything to say to your loving audience? I heard it too. It's windy. It's not ghosts, it's windy. <laughs> Welcome back to the Deity series. Today we are going to be talking about Hestia. Hestia is the daughter of Cronus, not Kronos, the god of time, but Cronus, the titan. A lot of people actually say that those are the same. I can't find a definitive answer, so they might actually be the same one or they might be totally different. I, I don't know. Who fathered many of the major Greek pantheon gods that we know of with another titan, Rhea. Hestia, or uh, I believe in Greek it would be Estia. The emphasis is a little bit different. It means hearth or I think fireplace, but mostly like hearth is more of a direct translation. When Hestia was an infant, along with four of her five siblings, she was devoured by her father because he was afraid of being overthrown by one of his offspring. He only did not consume his favorite child, Zeus, and Zeus winds up uh, forcing his father to uh, expel, regurgitate, his other siblings back up. And then Cronus is basically overthrown by the one kid that he chose not to devour. I found um, some notes that say because uh, Hestia was the first to be devoured and the last to be undevoured that she is the youngest and the eldest daughter simultaneously, which is a wild way to think about that. Hestia then becomes one of the main 12 Olympians with her siblings. Sometimes it's Dionysus instead of Hestia. Olympians are uh, third and fourth immortal beings after the primordial gods who reside on Mount Olympus and kind of become the main gods of the Greek pantheon. Beyond the uh, unusual lore of her upbringing. She's not in a lot of stories. She doesn't have a lot of lore of her own. Probably because while all of the other gods are running amok, uh, she stays on Olympus to tend to the fires. She is considered one of the eternal virgin goddesses, even though it seems like she had a lot of very interested suitors, some of them being her own siblings, because that is just the way in the Greek mythology world. She chose not to marry and instead to just continue her job tending to the fires on Olympus. She's a homebody, and as a fellow homebody, I can relate. I respect her choice. So Hestia is the goddess of hearth and home. She's not the goddess of fire, but she is the goddess of the sacrificial flame of the hearth. Many of the more um, domestic-based gods would receive sacrifices or offerings via people's personal home hearth fires, their fireplace fire. So Hestia would generally receive an offering first in the hearth fire before they give an offering to uh, whatever deity they are, whatever god they're going to give an offering to. Hestia would often be honored by giving her part of the offering. She received a share of every fire-based sacrifice to the gods. And she also sees over cooking, particularly when it comes to family meals or bread. Despite her limited like mythology, unlike, you know, Zeus or Athena who have all of these stories about them, uh, she remains a very important part of ancient Greek society. Her like Roman counterpart had these uh, vestal fires that were eternal fires that people would constantly keep lit on her behalf, essentially. And a lot of people would honor her like she is a part of their home. Now, when we're talking about a hearth, we're often talking about a fireplace in this instance, right? But a lot of things were done with your fireplace. It kept you warm. It was like a hub where everyone would go to. You would cook over that fireplace. You would do offerings over into that fireplace. It was a, a hub for a lot of things, but especially in modern day, I don't personally know anyone maybe like one person who has a functioning fireplace. So for a modern day practitioner who wants to work with Hestia, who's called to work with Hestia, um, you may have to shift how you do so. You might have to find what your 
the heart of your home is to find the hearth of your home. A lot of people have created like their altars to Hestia in their kitchen because their kitchen is where they're going to be cooking if they do a lot of bread making or uh, you know family time or whatever it's a kitchen. Um, I also know that a lot of people who like host parties even if they have like this whole beautiful like living room and stuff set up, a lot of people just naturally like go to the kitchen to hang out. So part of your personal practice with Hestia might be finding what your hearth is going to be. If you don't feel like it's your kitchen and you don't feel like it's a fireplace, it could just be your living room. It could be, you know, wherever it is that you feel is going to be the most cozy um, and the most applicable to your relationship to her and your personal use. The type of people who are often the most called to working with Hestia that I've seen are oftentimes people who are more house switches. If most of your practices are about uh, protecting your home, cleansing your home, uh, creating a safe space for yourself, for your family, uh, kitchen witches, kitchen witchcraft especially, particularly bread making. If you're like a, uh, a homebody, uh, cottage core kitchen witch that likes to make bread all the time, Hestia might be like the deity for you. So we kind of talked about ways that we can, you know, give offerings to Hestia. It would be through fires. You can give offerings directly to Hestia with a fire, but also if you're going to be giving them, you know, to other deities, other gods, uh, knowing that she's going to be getting a piece of that or giving her a first offering first is a nice way to uh, honor her, to respect her. If you were gonna give her like an offering of food, I guess it was also a tradition to, um, you know, throw some food into the fire for her. There were some like Orphic hymns that were recited uh, for Hestia. It seems like she was a pretty big part of the ancient Greek home life. So other things you can do for her or to strengthen a connection with her, cooking with fire on either a stove or a grill, um, or a, a fire pit, a fireplace. Baking bread is another thing. Of course, because of the sacrificial flame uh, part, you could have candles, especially uh, big candles, like long burning candles for her. I've heard that some people will um, light their Hestia candle and then use like that flame with a like a match or another candlestick to light their other candles, keeping, you know, the main fire is the one that lights the other fires. I think that's a beautiful like ritualistic way to go about it, to include her in your practice. And finally setting up an altar to her. I think that one of the things that I love about Hestia is even though she did have like outer locations, these like uh, ever burning flames to represent the Olympic sacrificial flame. Uh, even though she had locations, most people honored her in their home. They didn't go to the secondary location to honor her because her home is your home. The hearth is what she has domain over. So setting up an altar in whatever your hearth is, and it does not have to be very elaborate, um, having a candle or like a cool looking lamp, something reminiscent of like torches and this ever burning flame idea, anything with like bread symbolism, bread stuff. You could build your uh, altar on top of a bread box if you wanted to. I've also found that when it comes to like symbolism, for some reason she's associated with pigs. I don't know if it was that people were sacrificing pigs or if she just likes pigs, but I found pig symbolism when I was I was searching for her. I think that my personal practice with Hestia has been creating a environment that I feel uh, safe in that feels like my own. My ridiculous kind of maximalist crazy uh, home decor is sort of because of Hestia, because uh, when I was originally looking her up and learning more about her, I think one of the things that I really liked was this idea of, of your home being like a safe space, that 
the flame is always going to be there, that there's always going to be food, that there's always going to be warmth back in your home. And for me, I, for some reason, likened that to interior decorating, making your hearth, making your home feel the way that you want it to feel. I know that's weird and I, she's not the goddess of interior design, but like in my brain, that's, I put those things together. <laughs> but uh, that is my personal uh, experience. <laughs> the Greeks kind of thought of this like sacrificial flame to also be sort of a cleansing and purifying flame. So things like keeping my house cleansed and my energy and space cleansed, I feel like I'm also always working with Hestia on that. If you found this video interesting or got something out of it, please consider giving me a little like. If you have a deity that you would like me to cover in a future video, leave it in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed already, I have a lot more fun videos and deity videos coming up, and I would love to have you join me for those. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.